Well, hello and welcome to The Zone. I'm your host, Big Wave Dave. So today we're going to talk about part three of our series on refuting evolution, the fossil record. So what is the fossil record? Well, the fossil record is billions of dead things buried in rock layers laid down by water all over the world. So today's question is this, does the fossil record prove Darwinian evolution? Let's start with this. The fossils and the layers of the earth are laid down in what scientists called a geologic column. Now there are different opinions about this column. For example, evolutionists believe that this column represents billions of years of evolution of animals evolving from very simple creatures to very complex. Now, as a biblical creationist, I believe that the vast majority of fossils were created by the global flood that's described in the book of Genesis. So which viewpoint does the evidence support? Now, according to Darwin, if his theory is true, what we ought to find is lots of fossils of intermediate animals. In other words, animals changing from one kind to another. Things like this? Is that what we find? Now, I don't know about you, but that guy is really disturbing. Can you imagine him flying around and chomping on people's ears? <laughs> that would be very scary. But is that what we find? <laughs> Let's talk about the real fossil record. So the first thing is that creatures have always been complex. This is the fossil of a trilobite and he's found in some of the lowest layers in the geologic column. Now, according to evolutionists, at that level, the creatures that we find there should be very, very simple. But you know what? This guy is anything but simple. So he has eyes, and each eye has over 3,000 lenses to help this guy see underwater. Does that sound simple to you? I don't think so. And this is just one example. There are so many others that show complexity from the very beginning. Second thing to think about is that creatures are basically the same. We don't see animals changing from one type to another. Have you ever heard of living fossils? Now, these are fossils that are supposed to be millions of years old, but look a lot like what we have living today. Here are some examples. What is that? Well, that, of course, is a lobster. Now, it's supposed to be 200 million years old, but it looks just like lobsters today. And that, if you said dragonfly, you're right. So question, if this thing is 300 million years old, why hasn't it evolved into something different? Why does this look just like dragonflies today? This is a cockroach. Black. I don't know about you, but I really don't like these guys. So let's move on. Okay. 200 million year old crocodile, and it looks just like crocodiles today. Are you starting to see a pattern here? Fossilized bats look like, guess what? Bats. This isn't hard. In fact, there are no ancestors to bats found in the fossil record. There are no pre-bats. What we see is that they appear in the fossil record fully formed just like God made them. The fossil record shows stasis. We don't see animals changing from one kind to another. Scientists have discovered living fossils for virtually every type of living thing. So I have a question for you. According to Lawrence Berkeley, this guy is your great, great, great grandpa. In over 60 to 70 million years, he evolved into whales and bats and people. So here's my question. If that is true, then why do we see animals that are supposed to be hundreds of billion years old and they didn't show any change? Well, you see the problem? Yeah, it's a big problem for evolutionists. Okay, let's move on to number three. Most fossils were created by the global flood. Do we have any evidence for that? We do, lots of it. Let's take a closer look. Usually when you find fossils, they're in these massive graveyards. We have all these animals that were busted up and then washed together. Like this pile in Utah. We have over 2,000 bones with 11 different kinds of dinosaurs in a jumbled mess together with crocodiles, turtles, lizards, frogs, and clams. 
Now that's interesting. We have land animals mixed in with animals that live in the ocean. In fact, if you go throughout North America to these different massive graveyards, you'll see a lot of signs that say that the animals were buried by floods. And that you know, a lot of times there, you'll find land animals buried with shark teeth and fish and clams and other marine creatures. What could do that? What could wash land animals and sea creatures together? I think you know. Now, when we do find intact skeletons in the fossil record, they often look like they drowned. These poor little guys were drowned in mud. We even have fish buried with dinosaurs. Speaking of fish, check this out. This fish was eating when he was buried. And so was this one. And this one too. Whatever happened to these fish happened suddenly. They died a very quick, violent death. Did you know that scientists often find seashells on mountains? Even on Mount Everest. Now, time out. Mount Everest is over 29,000 feet high. How did we get marine fossils on there? Well, here's one idea. Floodwaters have really risen high enough to cover all 29,000 plus feet of Mount Everest? Well, secular and creation scientists agree that the floodwaters didn't rise high enough to cover the mountains. The mountains were smaller and more level and were uplifted by the collision of continental plates to the heights that they are now. Sedimentary layers containing marine creatures were also uplifted to the higher elevations. That's how come we can find fossils of sea creatures atop the mountains of the Himalayas. You know, it's very interesting. In Psalm 104, it talks about that the waters were standing above the mountains and that the mountains rose and then the valleys sank down. That sure sounds like a description of the flood to me. Finally, in the fossil record, we find soft tissues in fossils that are supposed to be millions of years old. Things like blood cells and blood vessels and nerves and collagen. Well, if they're that old, why do we still find soft tissues in them? And this is no secret. This has been talked about and written about in many of the mainstream scientific journals. So we have millions of sea creatures mixed in with millions of land animals. What could do that? the global flood, just like the Bible teaches. Okay then, if the flood created this, then what caused this, this pattern or this sequence? Well, first of all, the flood was not this, you know, gentle 40 days and 40 nights of rain that were often taught in nursery school. It was a total catastrophe that lasted over 370 days. Now, the Bible tells us in Genesis 7:11 that on the day the flood started, the fountains of the deep burst forth. Now scientists believe that that's a reference to the crust of the earth splitting. We had all kinds of earthquakes and land movement, and that would produce tsunamis, which some people call them tidal waves, but they're actually called tsunamis. So what would happen is for 150 days, the water kept rising, and tsunami after tsunami would crash upon the continents, and as they went, they would bury creatures in their path. You see, the creatures were buried according to where they lived, not when they lived. By the way, what about people? We don't see too many people in the fossil record. Why is that? Well, people are smart. And if you see the water coming, what would you do? Well, I would run to higher ground or maybe jump aboard a boat. But here's the problem. Since the flood lasted 370 days, if you didn't have enough food and water or a really sturdy boat, you weren't going to make it. So during the second part of the flood, the water started draining back down. So the, as the water came off of the continents and went back into the ocean basins, it carved out through erosion a lot of the features that we see today, some of the valleys. Now eventually, the, the grass and the plants grew back, but underneath them were these layers that were laid down by the flood containing the remains of billions of different types of creatures that we call the fossil record. Okay, so the characteristics of the fossil record, creatures have always been complex. Creatures are basically the same. They did not evolve from one kind to another. And finally, most of the fossils were created during the global flood described in the book of Genesis. Does the fossil record prove Darwinian evolution? No, it doesn't. So during our series, we have looked at different meanings for the word evolution. We've discovered that natural selection and adaptation and genetic variation are a fact. 
But this idea here, that all creatures evolved from a single-celled life form over millions of years, really a philosophy that requires a lot of faith. It is not based upon good science. What we see is what God said, that he created everything according to its kind. And he gave the, the creatures the ability to adapt to their environment, which is why we see such a variety around us today. Why does any of this matter? Well, here's the reason. According to this textbook, if evolution is true, you're an earthworm. <laughs> well, that's not very nice. Well, okay, no, you're not a worm. You're a fish. <laughs> How does that feel? Somebody calling you a fish, right? Don't you believe this for a second? The Bible tells us, and science confirms, that we were made in the image of God. You are special. Please don't ever forget that. Well, I'm Big Wave Dave, and that's all the time we have together today. I hope to see you again here on The Zone. God bless you. Have a great day.